lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In today's episode of Math Mondays, we are going to introduce the concept of electric displacement. Yay! So in this first part, we're going to work through where the concept electric displacement comes from and why it's useful. And then in part two, we'll do an example problem. Yay! Okay, so first, let's set the scene and remind ourselves where we're at. So we've been asking the question, what happens when you apply an electric field to a non-conductive material or a dielectric? What we have learned so far is that the charges inside that material will polarize or separate um, based on the direction and strength of the applied electric field. This will result in uh, what's called bound charges inside the material, basically negative charge and one part, positive charge and the other part. Um, and we learned that this um, can give us two quantities, a charge density inside, which is equal to um, the divergence of the polarization of the object, negative divergence, and a surface charge, sigma, whoopsies, getting ahead of myself here, bound charges, um, which is equal to uh, the total polarization, um, uh, uh, dot the dot the surface unit vector, which points radially outward of the surface. I mean, space. I was like, what is that called? Ah, yes, the unit surface vector. Okay, so um, these bound charges also result in an electric field because when you have charges that separate, there is a force between them, and that also causes an electric field. So now we can start to put the whole shebang together and ask, okay, well, what is the total result of applying an electric field to this material? How does it, um, how does this polarization um, affect the other charges in the area? And for simplicity's sake, we're gonna call those other charges, everything else, not the bound charges, free charges. Woo! they're free to float about because they're not bound inside the material. Okay, cool. So um, basically we have a situation where we have two different types of charge densities. So the total charge density can be summarized as the charge density due to the bound charges and the charge density due to everything else or the free charges. Um, and so then we can start to say, okay, well, how does this affect Gauss's law? Um, so I'm going to abbreviate Gauss's law with G's law. I never know how many S's to put. Um, so Gauss's law is epsilon naught, um, electric field dot, whoopsies, wait, flip it and reverse it. I was like, that doesn't look right. Divergence of the electric field equals um, the total charge density. So this we're going to put a little subscript here for total. Um, and so we're going to replace um, total charge density with the uh, bound and free charges. So uh, free. Um, but we can replace uh, the, the bound charge density with this term. So we end up with the divergence of uh, the total polarization, capital P, which is why I'm adding this little funky, like, I don't know, hat to the P, <laughs> um, plus the free charge density. Um, since the uh, since del, those are the same terms, we're going to move this over to the left-hand side, and we are going to get uh, del dot epsilon naught times E, this comes along for the ride, plus, because there's a negative sign here, plus the total polarization, oops, it's getting a little smooshed together, sorry about that, equals uh, the uh, free charge. Okay, free charge density, different. Okay, so this is where we're like, okay, this would be cumbersome to write all the time, we want to be lazy, and also it's probably going to pop up again, so we want a way to talk about this term um, shorthand so that we can communicate more effectively and do problems more easily. So what we're going to do is just define a new term uh, that is this quantity. So this is the definition for the electric displacement. So I'm going to use that three equal sign, which means we are very seriously defining something here. Um, when we're going to send it equal 
do epsilon naught um, times the electric field plus uh, the polarization of the object. Boom! So we just, this is where the electric displacement comes from, is the need to define a new quantity to replace this stuff in the parentheses. Um, and then what we can do um, is we can simplify this equation so we can read it a little bit better. Oopsies, that's D, not P. Um, so you have the, uh, the divergence of the electric displacement equals the free charge density. Or in integral form, um, the surface integral of the um, electric displacement dot, so I lost my little dot there, dot uh, dA equals um, the free enclosed charge. So that is the total free charge enclosed in uh, your Gaussian volume dA. Okay, so why is this helpful? Why do we care about the electric displacement? Um, well, because like I said at the beginning, when we set the stage, we are applying an electric field to the material. So we basically have some control over this free charge. And because we have control over it, typically we know some information about it. Maybe we actually took a quantity of charges and went bloop next to the material. So we know what that charge density is, or maybe we applied an electric field so we can kind of backtrack um, and figure that out. Um, but it's the polarization that's really tricky initially because the polarization occurs due to the applied charges or the applied electric field. So we typically start out knowing the free charge density, but not knowing the bound charge density. Um, and so this helps us to kind of suss out the two and solve the total problem and then get some information about um, the bound charges. All right, so let's see how we actually do that. Go ahead and navigate to part two. Yay! All right, see you there, friends. Bye!